Hi everyone and welcome to DevConf 2022. My name is Dorinda and I'm the co-moderator for this workshop. Up next is Eric D. Chabot. He's speaking about designing your best architectural diagrams. So Eric is Red Hat's portfolio architect technical director and he's renowned in the development community as a speaker, lecturer, auto and baseball expert. All workshop content is freely available online. You can find it in the abstract for this workshop on the DevCon schedule. Uh, while the workshop is ongoing, you can interact with Eric in the chat here. And if you have any questions, please write your questions in the um, Q&A section, or you can request to share your audio and video for your questions too. Thank you. And I will play the pre-recorded video and after that, the room is all yours, Eric. I think I have the URL, um, the URL scrambled. So I think you can go ahead, Eric. I can find the video. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> we were going to play a short uh, introduction, um, but let me share my screen here. Uh, share everything here. So if you follow the link we put in the chat, uh, you can also see it there. You see here we have Designing Your Best Architectural Diagrams. This is a free online uh, workshop. Um, this is all around our uh, architectural tooling. Uh, if you go back and look at the session we did this morning at 10.30, that shows you kind of the results of everything that we were uh, using this for. And what we've done is uh, put this together. And when you get in there, if you ever get lost inside here, just hit the M key and it gives you a, a, a nice table of contents there on the left side that you can run around in and jump through. Um, won't do that now. Um, what we're gonna do is there's a, there's a couple of phases. Um, the first part here, this is an introduction video. That's what I'm handling right now, so you don't have to go watch that or you can look at it next time when you're at home uh, continuing on with this. Uh, that kind of introduces what's going on and how this works. Uh, you're gonna walk through several labs. Uh, the first one is just gonna introduce you to the tooling. All the tooling is open source based on uh, the original draw.io.net uh, 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 tooling. Um, we've uh, redeployed that with a configuration on top of it that includes all the icons and the templates uh, uh, for you to use to get started. Um, so this is gonna introduce you to that. So all you really need is a browser. As far as I know, it works on pretty much every browser I've messed around with. Um, the only little uh, point of worth noting, sometimes it will, um, because of caching, recognize that you have something from before um, so it'll pop up and say, hey, I, I found something. You can either say, go ahead and edit what you found, or you can say disregard, and it'll go back to the beginning and, and let you pick a template and start all over. You're gonna do three different uh, uh, templates. So, And then we're gonna look at uh, the, the asset library and the color palette. So this is everything that's on the left side. Um, that's the second lab. It'll kind of walk through what those pieces and bits are. And then you're gonna start creating the very first high-level logical diagram. And um, this thing's gonna walk you step by step through it. You're gonna have screenshots, gonna show you what's going on. And you can do it in a tab right next to it or, or split screen your stuff. And then you have uh, exporting and importing diagrams. So kind of walking through how you can get what you create out, either the entire diagram or getting a couple of the uh, individual pieces. You can select and export. Um, this is really handy if you wanna put stuff into slides and, and things like that. We'll show uh, an example using a Google slide. And you have creating a schematic diagram. So first the logical diagram, very high level, and then you're gonna get down into pretty much like a, a, a physical diagram. And uh, we'll walk through the template and design something really simple for, for you. Um, and then we're gonna uh, create the detailed diagram, which is the final step. And that is if you wanna zoom in even further on one individual element in the schematic, you can kind of enlarge it out and create its own uh, example and look at that. So there's all three that we promised we were gonna do. And then we're gonna uh, show you how to use some of the examples that are already existing. We have a, a, an examples repository with uh, a 
about 30 projects in it right now, which includes complete collections of schematics, details, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, they're in all kinds of different verticals. They're in uh, financial, they're in uh, healthcare, they're in uh, edge cases, it's, it's in telco. There's all kinds of good stuff. So those are really nice to be able to import and, and get started with and uh, get, you, get you kind of jump started on creating some stuff. And when you import those, you get a bunch of tabs at the bottom with all the stuff you've imported. And then there's a few other tips that are involved in here and how to how to submit an issue if you have any issues around that kind of stuff. And that's 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 the complete workshop there. Um, I will jump in and show you really quickly uh, the first chapter and then kind of let you go and I'll hang out on the chat. Um, probably not going to finish this whole thing in, in the half hour we have or, or 30, 40 minutes that we got. But you can take all this home, right? This is this is all available online. So feel free to continue on and reach out to me at a later time. You see here that you have the link down here for the tooling. If you click on that, it should open a new tab. And here what it's done is it's detected something I'm doing. So if I want to go edit that, that's fine. Or I can disregard it. And you get the actual, what we're looking for, which you will find in the workshop. It's going to say, hey, this is what you should see. Uh, you see here it's got the, the thing there. So what do we do next? We're going to select uh, from the template, Red Hat template here on the left. We're going to select a logical diagram. Let's go ahead and do that. And create it, and the tooling comes up exactly like it says here. So we've just completed the first lab. So that was super quick. That wasn't that hard, was it? You'll find every single lab includes a, a reference at the end where you can find the workshops, the diagram tooling link, uh, examples for the diagram repository. So it might be worth jumping over to that really quickly. Let's go take a look at that so you can see what we got. Uh, this comes back later, but uh, you see here there's a, an overview of all the different uh, uh, stuff that's available. And if we picked uh, something like a, a healthcare one, it's a collection. You'll find it has uh, this one here, and it has ability to load stuff straight into the tooling, or you can download the diagram file. And you see some of the images have been created. This is some pretty complex stuff, so you could get started really quickly by, uh, by importing one of these things. Um, you'll get that in, in, in a lab in a minute, but it's, it's worth exploring that stuff. So after you do all that, you get every time they say, if you have a question, because you might be at the end of the lab and have a question, you can reach out to me or Ishu, who's the other guy that uh, did this. And then it goes on to lab two. You can just jump right to it. And you can see where you're at. This is where you should be. And then you move on and start following what's going on. So I'll go ahead and leave you guys to that. And I will go stop sharing right now so we can hang out and stare at each other and anybody has any questions you can throw it here into the chat i'll go ahead and do that or is it in q a hold on someone's got something in q a i think no in the chat i'm just going to hang out over here on the chat so any issues or questions ask here <laughs> And since I can't see what you guys are doing, normally in a workshop, I'd be walking around and looking over your shoulder and having to chat and all that kind of stuff. So feel free to share your cameras and jump on here. And if you want to share what you're doing or if you want to just chat with all of us. See if I recognize anybody in here. Hey, Linka, you're out there. You should share and come chat. I know her. Who else we got? Ah, uh, Ricardo. That's cheating because he's a part of the team that developed the tooling. <laughs> so I'll just go ahead and uh, I'm going to go back and share my screen again, and I'll show some more of the asset library we have and, and a lot of the stuff that we got going on here. Um, so where was that? Um, So you see here, um, when you open up the tooling uh, for that first thing here, you have like an example view here, and you have a second tab here at the bottom, and that is uh, showing you the actual template. And this template is uh, what you're going to be using to develop your logical diagram. And when you do a schematic, you're going to get a different template. They always come with the kit of parts, kind of gives you an idea of what's all available and labels and stuff like that. That's cute. Uh, but you have the starting caravan canvas here. and. Um, you'll be able to, to use different things here. And you see here, you have the application icons, you have uh, service icons, you have uh, 
infrastructure icons, all kinds of stuff. And then down here at the bottom, you have uh, detail diagrams. If you hover on any of these, you'll see these. These are for the details. We're not going to do that in this one. The logical ones, so you see these things here are all different kinds of services. It depends upon what you're going to do. So if I'm going to do one of these application service icons and I want to go down here and use the application service here, you drag it over here and you can deselect it, grab it, drag it over here until you see that it matches the template. You can drop it on there. And then you can, uh, I think it's control shift uh, down or to B, back, yeah. It goes to the back and then you can select this thing at the front and we can delete the, I think we can delete the, uh, it might be locked. So you have to use command L to unlock it. There we go. There we go. Well, no, I dragged the whole thing away. That wasn't the idea. <laughs> Uh, it didn't work that way, did it? So, but the fun part about this is, is no matter where you I already got rid of it. So there we go. So even if you get rid of all of these and you would drop in a few different things as you're designing and you see how they get all kind of cattywampus using a complicated word. And these are, uh, for example, some of the things you're going to use, and you're going to put this right here. And if you notice when I select that, you see this red around it? That means that it's uh, locked. And that's also in the stuff, but here's Control L or uh, Command L if you're using a, a, a Mac OS, and you can delete that background thing. You can use this here to size up, and then Control Shift B to go to the back, or you just right mouse it and say, yeah. Uh, Oh, I think I locked it, didn't I? Yep, unlock it. So you notice if something's locked when you select it, you see there on the right, now I unlock it, now it's available to be changing the color, the style, the lines, the text, uh, where it's arranged, the different stuff. We're not really going to do much of that. I never really do, but that's a hint. So if it's locked, that you can't get it. And if it is unlocked, you can. And you can right mouse it and go to the back. So now we have all these things here. We're giving it a label. We're calling this my dev cooling or whatever. I don't care. Now select and you shift and select all these. And there's a really handy thing up here that says arrange. And we can distribute these things vertically. So it'll separate them with the same amount of distance. And we can align them to the left edge. So they're all aligned to the left. Kind of nice. What gets nice is when you have one over here, And one down here, so you have a couple of these that you've made and you want to get them all lined up so they're all matching nice and neat to this one down here. So this one's kind of nicely centered and happy and I don't want to mess around. Select them all and say arrange, align to the bottom. Those are handy. When you get to the point where you're going to drop something in here, we have some kind of service. This is going to be my cloud service. You see that? That's a locking, so you're gonna drop it in there by locking that. So if I go over here like this, it's not gonna work anymore. Now I gotta delete it. And now it's been locked. Unlock, delete. You have to drop it straight on there by holding the mouse down. And now it resizes and locks into that, that spot there. You can select this and double click and you can start doing whatever you want in there. Um, cloud service. And maybe you decide you want to change the color. Go over here to the palette, and you can make it green there. And we can make this a containerized service again. But you don't want to lock that in here, do you? Then you end up with that. That's not what we want. You got to make sure you lock this with the right, the right part. So if I select that, you see it's red, and I'm not getting anything here on the right, so it's locked. I need to unlock it first. Then I'm allowed to change this over into the cloud service now. So that's how you're going to be working with this one. Um, somewhere along the lines, you're also going to see if I just hit reload, this thing is very capable of keeping track of what you're doing. Now you see the save button up here in the right corner, but if I just reload it without saving, he's been doing bookmarking for me, and he pops up with this, and he says, ooh, so if I do discard, remember, I go back to the, to the basic templates again, and I lose my work. But if I do edit diagram, and go look at my canvas, everything's there. So it's pretty hard to make a mistake, even though you're in the browser. 
hit the save here, you can give it a title and it'll actually save a file locally. Um, but let's reset this thing. And let's say I'm going on to lab two. And now we're working with a schematic diagram. You see here again, you have the kit of parts and all the stuff that you recognize. Starting canvas is a little different here. Huh? Got placement guides. We're not using the detailed stuff, so we can close that. We're not using the scratch pad. We're not using the logicals anymore. We're using schematics. One of these things is what we need. Drag these on here somewhere. Put it right over the placement spot. And what's nice about this is he has a lot of things going on. So these are for the networks. So you can draw network things on here. You're going to learn how to do that. Same story here. Um, we're going to select this thing and say, oh, I'm going to make this a containerized service it's an application. Make sure you do the right lock button. Select this here, not the text, and go over here and give it the right color. And you can call what kind of technology this is. I don't know. Uh, Runtimes node. JS. How many instances are in here? We have as many as we want because it's in a container platform. And if we have a second, second one over here, and this one might be an event stream. And where was that thing at? Where's our event stream? Here it is. Lock it in. Give it the right color. Get the right color. That's a wrong color. That one. There we go. And we can also zoom in on this stuff. 200%. Makes it much easier to see what's going on. And you can see if we take this and go to the back. Oops, not that. Select the whole thing. So here you see a little bit better that when you hover on these, you're going to get a line. And if you push down and pull, now I got a line. Now by default, this is just a black one. We don't really like that. That's a data line. But you also have down here various colored ones. So let's say we want to use the blue one. So you can select one. You see here on the side, you can set it as a default style. You can just delete this. We can say, OK, this thing now needs to talk to this one. Right, and you can drag these things around a bit so it's proper whatever going on here. And you notice these these three are used for networking. And these are used for input data and output data. So now maybe I want to change to a, a data. So I will set that as the default, and I will say this one is going to send some data over to this one. You can lock these in. And I don't really like a lot of jumping lines, right? I don't know how you are about that, but I hate that. So over here, you have these little arcs. So you can see it if you want to leave it like that. But a little bit of magic, a little bit of thinking, a little bit of triggering and jiggling, you can make stuff look really nice. Uh, you'll notice now here, if we go back to Reset View, it'll give you the big overview. If I just say go to 50%, it'll go like that. If I say go to 150, it goes in like that. So you can imagine if I'm at the normal view and I'm over here trying to say, hey, there's an event stream that's going to send something uh, over to wherever, to something else. Or out here we have our nice user. Let's get rid of this. I'm going to unlock it. Get rid of it. Unlock it. Get rid of it. Give him a, a device to talk to us. And we're going to say that he does a straight call into here, right? Which would be a bit odd. And we're going to bring this to the front so it kind of hides it in there. And you see now we're missing the arrow on that side. So we can go over here and say, oh, OK. We want the same kind of arrow. And what happened to our arrow? It's kind of it's really hard to line this up. You can't really see, right? So let's go down to like 300%. And we can see what's happening then. So if I 
start playing with this a bit. See that there's something messing around there. So let's bring this down to here. This should straighten that all out. There you go. And that's really small, that arrow. We can make it a little bigger, bigger lines. Make this one bigger. It's all pretty. And as you can see, there's a lot you can do with this. I'm just kind of playing around right now, but if you follow the follow the diagramming, you'll see what's going on. So there's your schematic stuff. And we have a, another option that we just redo this and say reload and say don't save it. Show you really quick the detailed diagram. Kit of parts, our placement guide, and the detailed diagrams, we can do our Cloud service application. Call this thing um, location. It's going to be a container one. Again, it has all these lockable things. Uh, you see here, there's some network details and stuff around this. Let's use this one over here and use a purple one over here. And if you don't need one, you can just select it and delete it. And say you do something wrong like that, then you use Command Z or Control Z or whatever, and it'll whatever it happens to say up here for undo, and you can get it all back. So it's it's not much you can really do wrong here, right? And then we can say what kind of technology this was, Java, and maybe it's using some Node S two. And you see that it's talking about virtual with these dashes, so we can change that to uh, the line. Did I select it? There we go. You see here that the line was dashed. Now let's just make it a solid line. And over here, what we like to use these for is, for example, this is taking a, a use, user request. It's coming in. And it might be sending uh, an event stream out, right? So it's going, in my example that I just created, it's going to an event stream, and maybe that's all it's doing. It's just an inbound application, which is kind of not probably what it's going to be. You see, we can delete all stuff we're not using. And then you can talk about how this is my uh, Java and Node yes, app. Well, we don't want to do that. We want to say something like this is application or a user to interact with my fine systems. And then we say one, two, and because it's on a container platform, right? So we can do as many as we want. We can give it a nice name. There you go. And then for example, if you want to select uh, this whole thing, you can go up here and this comes later in one of these things, you can export it as a PNG or any other thing you like. And only my selected item, I don't want this whole diagram, and then export. And what you're gonna see is what I'm gonna get as a file, I can give a name. I'm not gonna do it now. You see, excuse me, you see a lot of uh, possible connections to Google Drive, GitHub, and stuff like that. As long as there's not any crazy authentication uh, uh, involved, you can go directly into your own, uh, uh, own things. You can go to your device and just download the file. I'm not going to do that. Um, let's say we wanted to go to um, that examples repository. We wanted to import that healthcare thing I showed you really quick. And this one is called IDAS here. So what we do is we take uh, this URL and copy it because I happen to know that's the file. And I can go up here and I can say import from URL. This will be the last thing I think I'll show you. I think we're going to run out of time. And look what happened down here at the bottom. So you have the kit of parts and the thing we're working on, but now we also have all the different things that we were using for that. So you can go right in here and say, oh, I'm going to start editing some of this stuff and get rid of this. I don't want this thing. I don't want this. I'm going to connect this straight through to something else. And you can do whatever you want with this stuff. So then export it, save it, do whatever you want. 
We're more than happy if you're doing something interesting to have you uh, uh, submitted here. Feel free to uh, reach out to us here and, and you can use this as your centralized collection. We're happy to take almost anything, right? We have product demo stuff in here. We have uh, lots of different things in here, telco, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, lots of lots of information and, and projects are in here. Gives you that, that Git life cycle, right? Okay. Um, See if I can uh, stop sharing again. See if we're doing in the chat here. Any questions? Yeah. Differences between a logical versus schematic diagram. Best time to use each. Well, basically, we uh, we try to use all three. Um, the logical diagram is where you're doing uh, uh, the, the functional collections. So you do notice, for example, this has absolutely nothing to do with TOGA for any of these uh, uh, certifiable. Uh, standards in the architectural space. We wanted something that is conversational, uh, intuitive, and, and, and very flexible to do a generic architecture based on multiple customers that we research. So taking individual specific things, comparing them to each other, and then up-leveling that to something like that. Um, what you see in the logicals, if you explore our examples, is they happen to be non-technology specific, uh, uh, each block, each element is, is, is talking about what that group of, of, of components would eventually do. And uh, so you see a little bit more generic uh, terminology and you see collecting, like, like one's going to have to be in a container platform. And the idea is that we're presenting these to uh, architects and people that have their own infrastructure, their own architectural choices, their own legacy issues or whatever they have. And to be able to map a, a, a logical diagram to what they have and make sure they have the right components in the right spot for success at scale because we've taken these off of people that have done it at scale and then a schematic diagram tends to be when we drop down in and we show a specific case worked out and you'll find the logical diagram elements named again in there and then you notice inside that uh, uh, schematic diagram when i drew that there's a place to put the technology somebody put java and node.js in there for example um, you can indicate what's possible most of the ones you're going to find that we've done we try to map open source technologies and our products if possible. Um, that's if you're doing a green field. If you're not, I mean, if you need event streaming, there's a lot of options for event streaming. If you need to use application uh, and development tooling, there's a lot of choices out there. Uh, it's up to you to be smart enough to figure out by looking at that. So you also see the schematic tends to look a little bit like a workflow in the sense of this is how the, the, the architecture is tied together. And we like to do two different ones. You saw me do uh, the network and the uh, data together. Um, we really like to do one network and one data just to keep the lines simple. Um, so only with network lines and only with data. So I hope that answers your question, uh, Stefan. It's too much to type, by the way. <laughs> OK, there we go. All righty. Um, so. so I hope you guys are progressing with this and doing something with it or it's awful quiet. Kind of the bummer of these uh, virtual sessions, right? Okay. Quick example of the export. Uh, sure. Let me get back to uh, sharing my screen again. Um, Okay, so we have, uh, if you guys can see my screen, we have all this stuff in here again. Let's pick a different one. I'll show you what happens here. Um, so if I, if I selected nothing at all, uh, it's basically we're going we're gonna to try to export this whole diagram, right? So we're going to put it in as a complete slide. In the, so I just do PNG. Um, I zoom it to 300, and we found this this gets the best results, right? It gets... It's not dependent upon what you're viewing. It's just it's zooming the diagram out a little bit, so it's, it's a little bit more detailed. And, and, and uh, so 301 diagram. And you see what you're going to see. And then we got to give it a name. Shop. Example. 
I'm just going to download it. You'll see it downloaded here. And if I open it, whoop, there you go. I mean, you see it's a, a pretty high quality image then. And uh, this you can import into anything and, and, and use as you see fit. Now I can imagine when you, you do this into a, a, into a slide that's kind of crappy. Um, uh, what's nice is uh, what we do with our slides when we do that, we'll put this in as a complete slide. And then in the speaker notes, we'll put a link to uh, opening this up in the tooling. So from the slides, you just click on it, it opens a tab, and you're sitting right where I'm at now. So you can go in here and start editing stuff. Let's say we want to do the API management one. Oops. See, I just moved a little bit, but I did uh, uh, undo, and it's back. So I select, you see the line around it? Let's see what happens when I go to export. This one is a PNG. Only when I select it, not the entire diagram. Export, you see there? And I will download it. And if I open it, there you go. And you see, it's a pretty big, clear thing. So, I mean, I'm able to, to resize that inside my, uh, so when you import that, it's just the image, so I can resize that as I like. So we take a, any image or any piece or whatever. So maybe, maybe I want to do this, 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 and this. So I've selected all those using shift, and I can do export as PNG. And there's lots of other formats in there. I'm just doing an image file, so I can show you easy with download and get another download here. Open. There you go. I have a subset example of what I can use. So I'm going to stop sharing and see if that does that work. This tool is, uh, is is pretty nice. It's it's pretty well put together. Pretty uh, pretty easy to use. Um, we are we're actually hosting it. What you're looking at right there is uh, our configuration is in uh, GitLab, and we have a build pipeline that then pulls in the the base open source project, runs our configuration to include those. Oh, that's something I can share a little bit. But it includes the the palette and all the the templates and stuff. Um, let me share my screen again. And so over here, I don't know if you noticed or not, but if you look closely, there's these X's, right? And scratch pad and stuff. So let's say you wanted to do your own little thing. Uh, it's kind of fun to drop something over here. And now I have the ability to, well, that wasn't a good idea. See, <laughs> see what I just did? So I had all those things selected and dropped them on here. So I have a subset now that I can use everywhere. But let's say you wanted to add, I don't know, reporting services. So you can uh, you can uh, select that uh, and drop it on here. And watch what happens. You know, I have reporting services that I can use multiple times. So you can do your own thing. You can give it its own name. You can export it to have your own list, and then you can add it into anything you want. So if you have this exported, it's going to give you a file, and you're able to import it into here. Um, sometimes what happens is you'll you'll get excited and click on the wrong thing. So let's say I do this. And you're like, ooh, now what? Um, so you think, oh, let's reload this. And that's not going to fix it, is it? because <laughs> he remembers what I was doing, right? So what we're looking to do now is reload it. And this should get us back to clean version, but it doesn't, right? So this is a caching issue. Um, It's still gone, eh? So, what you also can do is open an incognito window, or whatever you call your private windows where there's no caching, and you get this back. 
So depending upon your browser behavior, you're going to find out whether or not you need to clear your cache. This occasionally happens with stuff like that. We could try to close. So I, I tend to often work just from the, the incognito stuff just to avoid any crazy stuff like that, right? Um, and, and funny enough, I mean, like, we start doing stuff like this and whatever and giving it names and colors and things like that. And then we do that and you think, oh, this is never going to work, right? But he still knows what's going on in my my little thing here. So he, he's good at that, right? But incognito is nice because when I throw it away, then I can just open another incognito window and I have all that back. So th this can be an issue. I mean, it's something that you, you want to be a little bit more careful about. Oh, another thing that's interesting down here at the bottom is add more shapes. Um, they also provide all kinds of good stuff here. So if you like AWS stuff, if you're into the IBM stuff, the IBM architects use this also. This is all part of their garage stuff. Um, you name it, there's so much stuff in here. So if you want to get really funky, you can do that. All I'm showing you is our little subset of stuff to keep it consistent. And our, our starting canvases are based on these things. So if you use something different, I'm not sure exactly what you're going to end up doing. But whatever you say, you pick one of these things and you say you want to use Azure stuff and you say, OK, apply it. What it does is it adds another, uh, should add another thing in here somewhere. Didn't it? Uh, where is it? Oh, I didn't check it. Hold on. Uh, zero. Check it. Apply. And then now you should see down here. Oh, I did it twice. I guess I did it right. So you see I have the Azure stuff, which just means that I can now make a service like that. I should be able to drop something in here and then lock in there. So no guarantees what that's going to do as far as our templates. So it looks kind of kind of bad for that kind of stuff. So maybe you'd have to come up with something different. I don't know. Do white only or something. But anyway, just just to be uh, just to have some fun. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing again. Any more questions out there from anybody? Ricardo, are you done yet? <laughs> you completed the workshop. One of the other things you will find, I can show you also. Um, oh, here we go. Got another question. So the session data that's stored during editing is that stored locally in the browser. Yeah, it's it's using browser cache quite extensively. So that's usually what's happening. Um, when you open it back up, and once you've done a, an actual saved file, I didn't show you that, but if you save a file, you get a draw IO file in your whatever, your downloads directory. When you restart back up, he'll say, I found a draw IO file. So I open that. And so he's smart enough to figure that out by looking at your local directory. That's based on your browser, wherever your browser does its downloads. Um, but there's a lot of, it used to be in the beginning when we first started this four years ago, it was a rather new tool and the caching was quite a quite an issue. So most of the answers were clear your cache. So I got tired of doing that. I mean, my if you want to be safe about it, I just use Incognito or the private browser or the you know the non non history one. And every time I open it back up or, or open one of those links from the, the example repository, just do a right mouse and open it in something without the caching. I prefer that because funny enough, I mean, if if you happen to close it and open it back up, it seems to find the files just fine. He just won't find your your uh, cache stuff in the browser anymore, so he won't be able to find back. Like when I do a reload, he has it in that cache for that that private window, but he doesn't have it if you close it and open it back up. That's the only difference between the two ways we're working. I really don't get caught up in it too much. It's, it's pretty good. 
I'm doing a lot of things with this. So it's not out there on the internet as far as I know. But I mean, you can, you saw that there's a possibility to, uh, to connect your GitHub or to connect to whatever those things were. Uh, let me quick look at the tooling. Um, here we go. Yeah, you can do Google Drive, GitHub, GitLab, uh, all kinds of stuff. You can import from a URL, so you can uh, just like we did, or you can import from a file or all kinds of stuff. It's pretty flexible. Should be able to make some pretty interesting diagrams. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't put confidential information, but basically there's also a desktop version you can download. Um, I don't do a lot with that. I don't really know what the quality or what that is for your particular OS. Something you just have to try. Um, I have none of those connections set up, no GitLab, no Google Drive, none of that. So I want, to be really honest, I don't know how you would deal with all the versioning inside of Google Drive, or uh, Google Drive, inside of uh, Git, GitHub and GitLab. It's not like you're forking, branching, and all that kind of stuff, merge requests. So it's kind of, I just, I've stayed away from it. It's just too much of a management issue. So what we do is the, the work cycle would be that I have, uh, in that examples repository, I have something I've checked out. It's a dry file file uh, that I open up and work on. Once I save it, it's been modified, so then you use the Git tooling in the background to push that up in a merge request and, and merge it in. Uh, we tend to export the images you saw, and those get put into a directory so that they can be shown on that uh, readme when you get down into the ADOC stuff gives a little bit of an overview of what's in that without having to actually open up in the tooling and that kind of stuff. And some people are just, you know, there's some people out there in the field that are, that are trying to do sales stuff and they might just want to grab a whole name and throw it aside and they're done. So there's no need for them to do export stuff. That's more for us nerdy guys and, go, and girls that like to do that for their, uh, for their software development or for their uh, architectural descriptions and their projects and stuff. It's quite flexible. So we've got about eight minutes so and again anytime you want to stop while you're working on the workshop like that with the tooling just save the file and come back to it later and pick it up it's not going anywhere keep it as up to date as we can we occasionally do updates to add new icons and stuff like that in our, our palettes on the, on the left side there uh, if i do that then i go through the workshop and update that so it all reflects if you find something that doesn't please reach out happy to do it Uh. <laughs> well, I see we have a... Okay. So... I you wrap it up? I'm good. Okay. So can we wrap it up now or we should wait because this is the guy coming in, sure. No problem. Thanks everybody. Okay. Thank you very much, Eric. And thanks to everyone for participating in the workshop. If you want to continue the the discussion, you can meet Eric in the work um, work adventure platform. Okay.